Okay, this is the very last part of the uh, hash table, uh, and we're going to talk about the map ADT. So the hash table will store uh, values and find a hash for those values, and you can test if the value is present. Uh, but we want to go a little further, and we want to still store key value pairs. Um, so since we do have a hash table, we're going to use it to implement a key value store called a map. And the Python dictionary is exactly the type of thing we're looking for. Uh, a Python dictionary, you store a key, and then you can store a piece of data that's related to that key, and then look it up by the key. Uh, the only difference between uh, what Python does is our keys will have to be integers, because we're uh, that's the type of hash function we're using. Uh, so we're going to create an abstract data type called map that stores keys and values. The key is going to be a number, and the value can be any type of object at all. Uh, the key, the map ADT interface, uh, we're going to have a, a way to construct an object of type map, which will create an empty map. And then once you have a reference to that object, uh, you can put a key value into it or get a key value. Although instead of using these two methods, uh, we're going to implement uh, what's underscore underscore get item and put item, which makes the the list operator will work on our new object. So we can uh, say the object reference and then square bracket and the key equals something to store. And if we say the object reference square bracket and the key, it'll retrieve. So it'll basically call get and put up here. We're also going to implement the delete operator to remove an item from the map. We're going to uh, use the length operator to return uh, the number of values we've stored in the map. And we're going to use the in operator uh, to test if a key is in the map. So the way we're going to store uh, values in the map, in the, uh, and this is the version of the author, we're going to show you another way of doing this. Uh, but we're going to use a hash table for the key part. Uh, so here's the constructor for the map. Uh, and in the, in the book, it's called a hash table. And, and we're going to show you another version where it's just called a map. But the constructor uh, sets an initial size for how many slots there are to, that it's going to be used throughout the code. And then it has a slots list, which is, is the actual hash table. So this is where the keys are stored. And then it's got a data list, which is a separate list, where the values are stored. And we're going to use a principle called parallel arrays. So the way this is work, once we have the hash table structure, we have this slots list and this data list. If we insert a cat, that's going to be at uh, a 50 key of 54. It's going to find the right, right slot for 54, which happens to be the last one. It's going to insert the key, which is the number uh, that we look up in the slots list. And it's going to corresponding at the same slot number in the data list, it's going to store the data, which is going to be cat, uh, the string cat. So you can see the correspondence here. So then when we store dog, it's going to figure out what slot is 26, which is slot 4. So slot 4 in both lists, one, one uh, list will hold the data, I mean the key, and the other list will hold the data, which is called the value. So every time we go to store something, it'll find the appropriate slot and store the key and the value like that. Now it's an alternative way of doing this. Instead of using two list, you can just use one list and store an object that has the key and value inside the object. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's step away here and look at these two different versions. So this is the first version. This is uh, in the hash table.py and uh, this is the code exactly as it's written in the book. So you'll see it sets the size. It sets slots equal to the uh, 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 a new list, which is size long. And it sets data to a new list, which is size long. When it goes to put in a new key, it's going to do all the work we've talked about for hash tables. It uh, first does a hash function um, here. So it gets a value, which is the slot number. It checks, is the slot number already have, uh, is the slot number empty? If it is, it's going to store the key into the slots and the data in the corresponding same 
hash value slot in the data list. So that's going to insert some data. If it's not empty, it has to find uh, a new slot by rehashing. So first it checks if it's not empty, is it already there? So it checks is the, is the uh, slots at the hash value I just computed up here already set to the key? If it is, we just replace the data. Otherwise, we have to go find where is the key. So we get the next slot by calling this rehash function. So that's going to index to a new slot. Uh, then we have a loop that's going to start at that next slot and it's going to keep rehashing until it either finds the key or it determines it's not stored. So it checks while the uh, next slot is not none and uh, the next slot is not equal to the key, then it's going to rehash and if next slot is equal to start, it's, it's looped all the way around. So uh, the map is full. So it raises an error. Okay, so if the, once the while successfully completes, it gets down here, it's found an empty slot. Uh, so test, uh, well it's found a slot that has caused the loop to stop, which means either uh, it's not equal to the key so it's, it's while not equal to the key, so it's going to stop if it's equal to the key or it's equal to none. So it checks here, why did it stop? Did it stop because it was none? And if it did, what you'll see it do is it sets the key into the that empty slot and the data. If it found it, it found it was already there, it just replaces the data. And so that's inserting data. Uh, when you look at git, it has to do basically the same rehashing until it finds it. And then you'll see uh, here's our rehash function at just adding one. So uh, we have the, the most simple rehash function. Here's the original hash function, just takes the key, modulus the size that's passed. And then it just implements get item and set item, which work with the square brackets uh, inside of Python. Uh, so it implements that operator for both setting and getting data by just calling the get and put that we've already defined. And so that's the author's code. Now we mentioned that you can, instead of having two lists, you can just do one list. And so this is this map code. So map just has one list called slots, but what we store in the slot is not the key or the value, but an object that has the pair of them. So we define a special class up here called kv for key value, and it stores a key and a value. And you can refer to the data in it by just saying whatever that object is dot key or whatever that object is dot value. And if we want to change the value, we call set value and it passes in value and changes the value of that object. So the big difference here is everywhere we're setting data, for example, put, if uh, the slot is empty, we create a new object which has the key and the data and we store it. And you'll see that goes all the way through and if we're changing the data we call set value on the slot and it will set the data for an existing one. So let's look at the, uh, I have a picture of these. Uh, so this was the parallel arrays so we talked about that picture so let's look at this other picture. So this is how the key values ones so you can see there's just one list and whenever you have a piece of data that exists, instead of none, it, it points to this object that we created which has a key and a value. So here we've, it's after we've inserted these three objects. So this structure here is equivalent to this, it's just a different way of doing it. Uh, I like this structure because it's a, I think it's a little cleaner and it's a little more object oriented approach. When you do the homework, uh, you have the option. In fact, this slide here will talk about a lot of the options you have. So when you do the homework assignment, uh, you can modify the hash map from the book to do chaining instead of rehashing. So that's what the assignment's about. Uh, but you can choose to either chain onto a separate list or chain using a set of linked list nodes. So you can do how you chaining, you can have your two choices. And then you can either have two parallel lists, one for the keys and one for the values, so that every time you put something in a chain in the keys, you put it in the same place in a chain in the values list. 
or you can use that key value objects and you're you just have one list and if you chain using either a uh, list or link list the data for the items in that chain will be k value objects instead of keys or values for two, two different lists. Uh, final note, there's a section in the back of the hash table that talks about performance, but we're just going to give you a, an important summary of it. Uh, so as the hash table fills its slots up, the load factor becomes bigger. Uh, if, you, if it's not very full, we've talked about the performance of a hash as O of 1. But as all the methods we've looked at here, uh, we end up, if it gets really full, we're going to approach O of n. Because we're going to be kind of degrading to where we're looking in those chains in the list, or we're going to be rehashing a lot. So that will degrade to O of n. Now, you can do better, but not with the techniques in this chapter. In the next chapter, we're going to use a thing called a binary tree, which allows us to put things into a special structure that stays sorted and then retrieve uh, them from the structure uh, via a key. That's called a binary tree. Uh, and a binary tree um, has the advantage that it, it, its worst case is O of log of n, so it does much better than the techniques we've looked at in this chapter.